The Lord be with you. I am Samuel Moore, and I'm here with Pastors Morris Brown and Katie Gallion and the rest of our worship leaders. It is my privilege to welcome you all to worship at Christ United Methodist Church this morning. Whether if you are worshiping with us in person, online, or by way of Christ Radio 101.7 FM, we are so glad that you decided to worship with us this morning. If this is your first time at Christ Church, or you have recently connected with us, we want to offer you a special welcome and invite you to scan the QR code found on the screen or fill out the blue card located in the pew rack in front of, in front of you and place it in the offering plate. This will help us connect with you in the days to come. If you are here in person, we hope you will also stop by our connection point desk, which is located in the gathering space there, our hospitality team would love to greet you and answer any questions you might have about our community of faith. As many of you all know, our mission statement at Christ Church is to embrace all people with the boundless love of God as we love, grow, and serve to, together. We hope you will feel the love in today's worship service. Today, we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, where our focus is on peace. I heard this message at the 9 o'clock message. It is a great sermon by Pastor Morris, and I know if our hearts and minds are clear, we each will be blessed by this message. So please receive our volunteer at this time.
Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all. If you all are worshiping with us in person, I invite you all to stand as you are able for our call to worship. The Lord is coming to us soon. Make ready your hearts to receive him with joy. The Lord is coming to us soon. The one will be called the Prince of Peace. Let us offer praise to the one who brings peace to our hectic and broken world and be filled with the Holy Spirit who will spur us to be peacemakers each day. I invite you all to remain standing for our opening hymn, hymn number 203, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Please be seated. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. It calls us to prepare for the coming of Jesus, who is called the Prince of Peace.
brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given birth through water and the Spirit. And all of this is God's gift, offered to us without price. This morning, it is our privilege to receive Barrett, Stephen, and Eloise Barton into our community of faith. Barrett comes to us by way of transfer of membership from Trinity Baptist Church. And Stephen comes to us by way of profession and faith. And along with their daughter, Eloise, will be baptized this morning. And she's excited about it. So Barrett and Stephen, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you to affirm your baptismal and membership vows. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, putting your whole trust in His grace? and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, all nations, and all races. If so, your response is, I do. And will you, as loyal members of Christ's universal church, be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, your response is, I will. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and witness. If so, your response is, I will. And will you nurture Eloise in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be one day guided to accept God's grace for herself, profess her faith openly, and lead a Christian life? If so, your response is, I will. And now... I ask all of you as the congregation of Christ United Methodist Church, do you, as Christ's body, the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, your response is, we do. We do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this family who is now before you in your care? With, With God's, God's help. help we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround them with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in the trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Then let us affirm our faith by sharing together in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And let us pour the waters of baptism. Eloise, I'm going to pour this water, okay? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the water of the sea, and their children you brought to the waters of Jordan, to the land which you had promised. Then in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, who was nurtured in the water of his mother's womb. He was baptized in water by John and anointed by your spirit, and then called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to go and make disciples of all the earth. So we invite you to pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and Stephen and Eloise who shall receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their life, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may one day share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. 
All right, Eloise, I'm going to baptize your daddy right now. Is that okay? Can I put some water on his head? Stephen Michael Barton, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit work within you to make you a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, Eloise, are you ready for a little water on your head? Eloise Claire Barton, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit work within you to make you a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Oh, man, you did so good. At this time, Eloise, Pastor Samuel is going to take light from this Christ candle. And we're going to light this candle, which is a symbol of your life. And it reminds you of the light of Jesus that burns within you and your daddy and your mommy and all of us. And we're called to share that light with all the world. Pastor Samuel also has a little gift for you, okay? Eloise, our knitting ministry team has sewed this blanket for you. So every time you snuggle in this blanket, please know that Christ Church loves you and so does God. <laughs> She's not ready for it yet, is she? <laughs> <laughs> and now, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. What is your response? We give, give thanks, thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Stephen, welcome to Christ Church. We are so glad that you're here. Barrett, welcome to Christ Church. Eloise, we are so glad that you're here. and We look forward to watching you grow. <laughs> and we'll be friends one day, I promise. <laughs> you all may return to your seats. Hey Christ Church, I'm Lori Gray, the Director of Communications and Connections. Pastor Morris, Robert, Joe, and I recently visited the Pathway Shelter to see some of the spaces they are hoping to renovate and to meet a few of the staff. As I looked around the efficiency apartment, the need to update the space was apparent. These units currently have small efficiency stoves, which according to the Director, are more expensive to repair than a standard stove, and these appliances are needing replacement because of age and use. One of the many updates your generosity will do is replace these stoves with standard stoves. Pastor Morris will be talking more about our Christmas Eve offering in his sermon today. Now a reminder that our candlelight service is next Sunday at 5 p.m. and prelude music starts at 4.30. This is a very well attended event, so I definitely come early to get a seat. After the service, may I recommend tuning in to our radio station 101.7 FM to listen to Christmas music and drive around and look at all the beautiful Christmas lights in Greensboro. You will not be disappointed. Ministries like our radio station are only possible with your generosity. As are events like the Advent Workshop where we had over 100 people come to make ornaments, Advent wreaths, and more. Thank you for your big hearts and generosity that allow us to spend time together in fellowship or to experience the beauty of the season through music. We get to do so much together because of you. This week, I want to encourage each of you to make a new friend or at least make someone's day. Thank you for being your warm, welcoming selves. Happy second week of Advent, Christ Church. See you next week. Christ Kids time. Ooh, <laughs> I'm Pastor Katie. If you are a Christ kid or a Christ kid at heart, can you give me a big wave? I want you to tell me um, what do you think about when you hear the word Christmas? Ooh, that's good with Jesus. What else? Lights, the Christmas lights, maybe Christmas cookies or Christmas carols. All of those are great things about Christmas. There are so many fun things to do at Christmas and so many fun ways to celebrate. 
The very best part is the reason we celebrate Christmas in the first place, which I heard that too. <laughs> Christmas is more than presents and twinkling lights. It's a magical season that whispers a beautiful message, the message of peace. Christmas is about celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Jesus came as part of God's plan to rescue us. We can have peace because we know that God always has a plan, even when we're sad or scared or uncertain about something. Picture this in your minds. Snowflakes are gently falling, carolers are spreading cheer, and families are coming together with love in their hearts. Christmas is like a gigantic hug for the world, reminding us to be peaceful and kind to one another. You see, peace isn't just about quiet times. It's about sharing joy, being a good friend, and spreading warmth like a cozy blanket. Imagine a world where everyone is friends, where there's laughter instead of grumbles, and where smiles light up every face. That's the Christmas spirit in action, a time for peace and happiness. If you're worried about something right now, or if something in your life is changing and you're not sure what the future will bring, you can find peace because God is in control. You can put your trust in God like Mary did. You can live with peace because you know that God is good, even when we don't under always understand. So, my little holiday heroes, let's work together to make the world a better, more peaceful place. We can share our toys, we can lend a helping hand, and be extra kind to those around us. Whether it's saying please and thank you, or giving someone a big heartfelt hug, every small act of kindness creates ripples of hope and peace. Christmas is a reminder that we can be peacemakers, not just during the holiday season, but all year round. So let's make a promise to spread peace like confetti, making the world a brighter and more peaceful place for everyone. Let's talk to God, the maker of peace now. Dear God, thank you for your son Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Thank you for the ways you give us promises of hope and peace through Jesus. Forgive us when we are peace breakers instead of peacemakers. Allow each of us to use the ways you created us to bring peace wherever we are. We love you so much. Amen. Now, if you're an infant through second grader here in person, you can meet your leaders in the gathering space. Adults, please make sure your kids are checked in, and you can pick them up in room 103 after the service. All right, Christ kids, let's go have some fun. Thank you, Pastor Katie, for that wonderful message. We now come to our time of offering, and we're so grateful for the ways you support the missions and ministries of Christ United Methodist Church. Your generosity allows us to love, grow, and serve one another and the community together. There are many ways to give, which is shown on the screen at this time. Thank you for your generous gifts. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward to receive this morning offering. Thank you.
I invite you all to be seated and let us send our hearts and our minds for a call to prayer. you all pray with me, my sisters and brothers. Prince of Peace, there is tension within us, in our families, relationships, places of employment, government, schools, churches, and the world. We pray that you help us keep our minds on you despite all the chaos and distraction because those whose minds are on you will experience true peace. Help us embody the peace that transcends all understanding. Let your peace abide in us and rest on us so those who lack peace will ask us how to get the peace you have granted us. Help us who have been called by your name be peacemakers who make those who cause chaos and trouble uncomfortable. Let us pursue peace like we do things that we desire. Let us bring peace to every situation where chaos is prevalent. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who is the king of all things, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Didn't they sound wonderful? If you are worshiping with us in person, I invite you to stand as you are able for our scripture readings for this morning. Our first scripture reading will come from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9, and I will be reading verse 6. Now hear the word of God, my sisters and brothers. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Our second reading will come from the prophet Isaiah as well, chapter 2, and I will be reading verse 4. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat thy swords into plowshares and thy spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Our last reading comes from a gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 8 through 14. Once I get there. I was in chapter 8. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over thy flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You all may be seated. whether you're worshiping with us in person, online, or by way of Christ Church Radio, we are so glad that you are here. Before we uh, reflect on today's scripture text, let's pause for a moment of prayer. Would you pray with me? Oh, gracious Lord, we do give you thanks for the gift of this day and for your presence in this holy, sacred place, especially in this season of preparation. We ask, oh Lord, that you would speak to us your words of love and life this day, that we might know your peace, not only today, but each and every day of our lives. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 
Well, as you know, during this Advent toward Christmas season, we're trying to help you prepare for the celebration of our Lord's birth and eventual return. And to help us do that this year, we're sharing a worship series entitled, What I Really Want for Christmas. In this series, we're asking a simple question, and the question is, what do you really want? What do you really want for Christmas? Now, if most of us are honest when we answer the question, uh, what we really want, what we really need for Christmas are not tangible things, not things like jewelry or Xboxes or new clothes or even a Lexus, although a Lexus would look pretty nice. Uh, what most of us really want, what we really need for Christmas are intangible things, things that can't be bought in a store, can't be delivered by Amazon, things like hope and peace and joy and love. So in this series, what we're doing is learning how the story of Christmas can actually help us receive these things, not only at Christmas, but throughout the year. Now, if you were with us last week, you know we began our series with a message on hope. And from the story of the angel's annunciation to Mary, we learned how we can all find hope even in the most difficult and challenging of times. This morning, we come to the second message in our series. And what most of us really want for Christmas is not just hope, but also peace. In her poem entitled Otherwise, Jane Kenyon says this, Peace is our deep longing. And she's right, isn't she? Most of us really do have a deep longing for peace. This morning we even lit an Advent candle of peace to express the longing that many of us have. In this time of holiday stress and strain, it expresses our longing for peace in our homes, our relationships, and in our hearts. In this time of war between Israel and Hamas and Ukraine and Russia, it expresses our longing for peace among the nations, for peace in all the world. Well, here's the good news. Peace is exactly what God wants to give us in this Advent toward Christmas season. In fact, in this morning's gospel lesson, we're reminded that peace is God's will. We heard the angels proclaim on the night of our Lord's birth, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and goodwill to all people. See, peace is God's will for us. Peace is God's will for all people. Peace is God's will for the entire world. So if you and I really want peace for Christmas, and if peace is God's will for us and for the world, the question becomes, how do we find this peace that we're all looking for? Well, activist A.J. Munst once said this, there is not a way to peace. Peace is the way. In other words, peace is not something that you and I find. It's something that you and I make, something that you and I create in our lives, our relationships, and in our world. If you and I want to experience peace in our lives, our relationships, our world, we've got to do things that create a context for peace to emerge. As Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, whom the prophet Isaiah called the Prince of Peace, will one day say, we must be peacemakers, not peace breakers. How do we make peace? How do you and I create peace? Well, first, we've got to do things that make peace, that create peace in ourselves. In his book, Creating Peace, Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh says this, To bear peace in the world, we must begin with our own hearts. For if we do not have peace in our hearts, we won't be able to share peace with others. The Christian mystic, Thomas Merton, put it another way. He said, if you are at peace with yourself, then there's at least some peace in the world. And you can begin to share your peace with everyone around you. So how do we make peace, create peace in ourselves, deep within our own hearts? I can think of three simple ways to do it. First, to create peace in ourselves, especially in this Advent season, we need to slow down. This is a busy season, isn't it? I mean, there are presents to buy, there are decorations to put up, parties to attend, activities to participate in church. And all these things are great, but they can also lead to a lot of busyness, a lot of hurry in our lives that can actually rob us of our peace. In fact, all this busyness, all this hurry can create pain instead of peace. 
Let me give you an example. A few years ago, Pam and I were headed out for one of our many church Christmas activities that we needed to attend. Just as we were about to leave, Pam looked me over. And after she did, she said, your shirt's wrinkled. You need to iron it. Well, we were running late, and we were in a big hurry. So I decided to iron my shirt while it was still on my body. Now, at first, everything went pretty well. I plugged the iron in. I began ironing. I got most of the wrinkles out. There was one wrinkle, however, in the chest area that just wouldn't get smooth. So what did I do? I hit the steam button. And when I did, let's just say I arrived at our Christmas activity with a brand new chest tattoo. Carl Jung once said, hurry is not of the devil, it is the devil. And that's true. When you and I get too busy and too big of a hurry, it can rob us of our peace and even lead to pain in our lives. So if you and I want to create peace in ourselves, one thing we've got to do is slow down. Slow down in this season. Second, to create peace in ourselves, we may need to set some lower expectations. See, many times you and I fail to experience peace in this season because we think everything's got to be perfect, right? I was reminded of that when I read an article this week entitled, Low Expectations, the Key to Christmas Happiness. In the article, the author said this, The only reason that many of us get disappointed at Christmas and at other times of year is because our expectations for how things are going to be are way too high. The truth, however, is if we'll lower our expectations, we can make our Christmas and the rest of our lives much more enjoyable. And that's true, isn't it? So if we're expecting the kids to sit quietly at the car during our three-hour wait to see the lights at Tanglewood, we need to lower our expectations. Then we'll be happy even if they start whining or fighting in the back seats. If we're expecting our Christmas decorations and Christmas dinner to look like Martha Stewart put them together, we need to lower our expectations. Then we'll be happy even if the tree's a little crooked and the turkey's a bit overcooked. If we're expecting our extended family is going to gather without our cousin Eddie making inappropriate political statements or telling off-color jokes, we need to lower our expectations. Then when he does, and he will, we'll be happy anyway. Or at least we'll be able to get through the evening without punching him in the nose, right? Here's the point. If we want to create peace in our hearts this holiday season and the rest of the year, we need to lower Lower our expectations. Third, to create peace in ourselves, we need to engage in solitude and silence. You know, Jesus was one of the most peaceful people who ever lived. And if you read through the Gospels, you quickly discovered why. I mean, he regularly stepped away from the busyness, hurry of life for brief and extended periods of silence and solitude. Now, I know we don't want to hear this. There's almost this universal resistance to solitude and silence, to contemplation and meditation in our culture. We say things like, I don't have time for it, or I can't be quiet, or my mind starts to wonder, or it just feels like a waste of time. But the truth is, solitude and silence really is a path to inner peace. And if we'll create moments to be alone in our day, to be still, to be quiet, even if it's only for five or ten minutes, we'll discover God begins to fill us with the peace that we need. So if you and I want to begin to experience peace in this season, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to begin with ourselves. We've got to slow down, set lower expectations, and spend some time in solitude and silence. There's a second thing we need to do to make, to create peace in this season, however. And that is we've got to do things to make peace in our relationships with other people. In other words, we may need to do some things to make peace with someone that we hurt this year or with someone who hurt us this year. For some of us, that's going to be a family member. For others, it may be a co-worker. For still others, it may be a friend or a neighbor. Now, sometimes making peace is going to mean that we have to forgive someone. And that can be tough, right? 
For example, I love the story about two little brothers who got into a fight over a toy they were playing with one evening. Now, their mother tried to get them to make up, but they just wouldn't do it. So as she was putting them to bed, she decided to give it one last try. She said, boys, the Bible tells us we should never let the sun go down on our anger. So I think you should forgive one another before you go to sleep tonight. Hearing this, one of the brothers looked up at his mom and said, Okay, mom, I'll forgive my brother tonight, but when he wakes up in the morning, he better look out. Isn't that true? When you and I get hurt by others, by something they say or something they do to us, our tendency is to want to hurt back. And if we don't hurt back, well, at least we want to hold a good old-fashioned grudge. But the babe of Bethlehem, the one that we call the Prince of Peace, comes to show us another way. He comes to show us the way to peace is not revenge, not retaliation, but to forgive. You must forgive as you have been forgiven, he will say. Now we need to remember that to forgive doesn't mean to ignore the hurt that has been done as though it didn't happen. Author Brene Brown puts it this way, to forgive does not mean to forget. Nor does it mean failing to hold someone accountable for the hurt that has been done. What it does mean, however, is honestly addressing the pain that's been caused, recognizing the past cannot be changed, and being open to the possibility of a new future. For some of us, finding peace, making peace in this season, will mean forgiving someone who has hurt us. For others, however, making, creating peace in the season will mean seeking the forgiveness of someone that we have hurt. For some of us, it will mean going to that person, apologizing for what we have said, what we have done, and asking for forgiveness. And the truth is, sometimes that's harder than forgiving. The way Irma Bombeck put it like this, the only thing harder than forgiving someone is to ask for forgiveness, armed only with the words, I'm sorry. And yet, if we're going to make peace, it has to be done. Author Lee Strobel puts it like this, when we have hurt someone, few things accelerate the peace process as humbly admitting our wrongdoing and asking for their forgiveness. So if you and I want to make peace, if we want to create peace in ourselves and in our relationships with others, it may mean that we need to forgive someone who has hurt us. Or it may mean that we need to ask forgiveness from someone we have hurt. Finally, however, to experience peace, to create peace in this season, we may need to do something to help make peace in the world. You know, in our Old Testament text from Isaiah 2, the prophet Isaiah reminds us that the biblical vision of peace is not just about creating peace in ourselves or creating peace in our personal relationships. It's also about creating peace in the world. As Isaiah 2.4 puts it, God's desire is to settle things fairly between nations, to make things right between differing peoples. God's desire is to help people turn swords into shovels and spears into hoes. God's desire is that nations will stop fighting nations and quit playing war. So you may ask, what can I do to help create world peace? One thing you and I can do is simply pray. Pray for peace. I love what Pope Francis said recently. The best way to begin promoting peace in the world is simply to pray for it. That's because as people of faith, we believe that our prayers make a difference. We believe that when we go to the Holy One in prayer, we are actually releasing God's healing energy into the world that affects relationships not only around us, but across the globe. And yet praying for peace is only the beginning. As the Dalai Lama says, it's important to pray for peace, but you should also take some kind of action 
to make peace happen. So in addition to praying for peace, we can help create peace in the world by supporting and encouraging efforts to fight injustice and relieve the suffering of others. Martin Luther King Jr. put it like this, much of the turmoil in the world can be traced to some form of injustice and suffering. For when people are robbed of the basic necessities of life or are forced to live in ways that are degrading, they often become desperate and they respond with violence. Do we not see this time and time again across the globe? So if you and I want to help create peace in the world, it's important for us to find some way to use our time, our energy, our money to fight injustice and relieve the suffering of others. And there's so many ways to do it. We can feed the hungry. We can work to make housing affordable for everyone. We can expose and fight to end racism. We can care for the environment. We can work to pass reasonable legislation around the issue of gun control. Then any time you and I use our time and our talents and our financial resources to support and engage in activity that can help people reclaim their dignity as human beings, we're helping make peace around the world. You know, one of the ways we're inviting you to do it at Christ Church in this Advent season is to simply make a, make a generous donation to our Christmas offering for Greensboro Urban Ministries Pathway Center. As Lori Gray told you in our Be the Church segment, the Pathway Center provides support for families in our city who are experiencing homelessness. It does it by providing free, safe, private, efficiency apartments as well as food and child care and job training and spiritual support to families who are homeless while they get back on their feet. Unfortunately, because of overuse, many of the 16 apartments that Greensboro Urban Ministry has are in need of renovation. So our goal is to raise $35,000 to refresh them in early 2024. And I believe it's a goal that we as a community of faith can make. I also believe that by doing this, and along, among other things as a community of faith, we're helping God create peace in our world. So how do we help create peace in the world? By praying for peace, by supporting and engaging in efforts to fight injustice and relieve the suffering of others. But there's one more way to help create peace in the world, and that is by building bridges with people who differ from us. As you know, Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, would use his life to build bridges with all kinds of people, right? Rich and poor, young and old, lepers and lawyers, men and women, fishermen and tax collectors, Gentiles and Jews. And he calls us to do the same. So every time you and I engage in a meaningful relationship with someone who differs from us, whether by race or religion or sexual orientation or social economic status or stage of life, we are building bridges. Bridges that create a more peaceful world. And we don't have to go far to do that. For example, my neighbors on both sides are Jewish. We want to see everywhere. So if you're a Democrat, build a relationship with a Republican. If you're Caucasian, build a relationship with a person of color. If you're straight, build a relationship with a person who's gay. If you're a Carolina fan, build a relationship with a Duke fan. Okay, that may be going too far. Start with an NC State fan. Seriously, to help God turn swords into shovels and spears into hoes. To help God create, make a peaceful world. We've got to pray for peace. We've got to support and engage in efforts to fight injustice and relieve suffering. 
We've got to intentionally build deep and meaningful relationships with people who differ from us in some way. So let me ask you, what do you want for Christmas this year? I mean, what do you really want? If it's peace, God wants to give it to you. It's God's will for your life and mine. And through the birth and life and death of Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, who we call the Prince of Peace, God shows us the way to receive it by doing things that create peace in ourselves, by doing things that create peace in our relationships, by doing things that create peace in the world. I hope we'll all do at least one thing to create, to make peace in the weeks to come. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious Lord, we live in an unsettled world where there is much trouble and turmoil, and yet you are the God of peace. And through the birth of Christ, our Lord, the Prince of Peace, you show us the way to help you Create, make peace in all the world. So help us, O Lord, to take the wisdom of our faith, apply it to our lives, that we might be your instruments of peace wherever we are, not only in this season, but every season of the year. We pray these things in the name of the one who comes, Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're worshiping with us in person, we invite you to stand together as we sing our closing hymn.
being with us in person, online, or by way of Christ Church Radio. We hope that today's worship experience got your week off to a peaceful start and encouraged you to be a peacemaker and not a peace breaker. Let us go in the peace of the God who loves us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. your financial support. Here are several ways that you can give. You can give through our website, via text, in person, or mail. Please know however you choose to give, your generosity allows Christ Church to continue embracing all people with the boundless love of God as we love, grow, and serve together. We would love for you to join us next Sunday for worship, whether that be online or in person here on our Holden Road campus. We pray that the God of peace and of grace be with you until we meet again. Have a great week.